Welcome back to the Wedding Photo Hangover Podcast, the finest phototainment in the world. We are an irreverent look at photography. This podcast, like aspirin, will help you recover from your wedding hangover. Hey guys, it's me, Steve. Dustin is not with me right now. He'll be with me on the episode. Um, we're going to be releasing all of the interviews we did at Imaging. Um, we basically just walked around the showroom floor and tried to talk to as many different people who were there as we possibly could. So it's kind of a, it's kind of going to be a different episode than what we normally do. Um, we're breaking it up into two parts because there's just so much there. And as you can see, it's taken like over a month for us to like process everything and go through it. So yeah, we hope you guys enjoy this because we had a lot of fun doing it. <laughs> and we hope it's a lot of fun to listen to. But if it's not, just hit us up in the comments and say, uh, screw you guys. <laughs> this is terrible. <laughs> I'm okay with that feedback. That's fine with me. So uh, just a quick preface to the entire episode, though. Um, Dustin and I rode together from my house in Noblesville all the way down to Nashville. That's like a five-hour-ish drive. So I assumed we would listen to music, maybe listen to podcasts, maybe just be silent and not talk the entire time. Dustin had different plans, and somehow... He got me to talk to him for five hours straight, like almost like we were best friends or something. And um, as a result, I did lose my voice before the first day of recording for this. So if if you if you're listening to the episode and you're like, who's this guy who sounds almost like he's crying the entire time while doing these interviews? Um, that's me that there's just something wrong with my voice. Um, and don't worry, don't worry, because uh, by day two of the interviews, it actually got worse because, well, we went to a karaoke bar and like talked to people for like five hours straight and drank a lot of beer and were around people smoking cigarettes. So, yeah, yeah. Welcome to my descent into madness and into talking like I'm in junior high again. It's a great time. I really, really enjoyed it. But let's flip it over to the interviews. First up, we're talking to uh, Kodak. Hey, this is Dustin. I'm here with Dave at the Kodak booth here at Imaging. Dave, tell me a little bit about what we're doing here today. Well, you know, we're, we're very excited to be here. And with Kodak Professional, we've got a lot that we're um, showcasing here, yeah. including we have a, a new film. You know, we continue to re reintroduce films. And film has been very popular, which, is, which has been quite... Uh, fantastic and it's great to see people are enjoying the experience of shooting film planning that shot and we've just uh, broadened our portfolio with our Ektachrome E100 and 120 nice. format, right? Would you say that film's kind of seeing a resurgence in photography it, now? It has definitely seen a resurgence. We've been seeing double-digit growths that are that have been uh, for the last four or five years, and we're certainly selling everything that we can make, and it's 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 been quite uh, quite. It, it's just been fun because people are really enjoying the experience of film. It gets them out from behind the camera and into the shot itself, and it's just a it's just a tremendous experience for them. So that's been yeah. good. We're also. Uh, previewing a, a brand new photo paper that has quite a unique look to it, something that we call Radiance. And it leverages our metallic technology with our professional Endura emulsions with a special overcoat that kind of gives it like a soft appeal to it. So it, it's, um, it has a, just a nice fiery impact look, but yet a, a, a very interesting appeal. Are any of the labs uh, here printing on that yet? So I, when I say it's like brand oh, new. Oh, it's like brand, right? brand new. Yeah, I just I brought a wedding album here that looks beautiful on this Radiance, and we're getting labs now. We're telling them that, hey, it's here. We're ready. We're getting them to test it. We hope to have the paper available to the market by, let's say, this fall. Nice. And then we got a couple of new software products. I'm going to talk about one mainly that's uh, really good for the wedding market. It actually, it's called KPro Select. <laughs> and what it does is it takes artificial intelligence and it helps photographers with image culling. Okay. So you know when you shoot a wedding. That you're sounds like black magic. <laughs> it, it is black magic. You, you think about you're shooting 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 images and you've got to take those back in and then you've got to just go through them one at a time, right? right? It's the worst, the absolute <laughs> worst. Right. 
We, yeah, we, we did our research up front, and we found out that that's like the number one pain point of the post-process. 100%. Of, right? So what it does is it applies artificial intelligence to do two uh, aspects of eval- image evaluation. A technical evaluation, it looks at focus, brightness, contrast, sharpness. It does an aesthetic evaluation, eyes open, smiles, wow. centered. It then scores each image, right? So if you feed it, let's say, 2,000 images, and you say, I want to see the top 100 images, it will rank them from 0 to 2,000. It will return the top 100. It groups near duplicates. So you can then see, uh, you can see the one that it took, a, it selected compared to the other duplicates that are there. You can make a decision on, did it do well? Do I need to swap it? Right. Uh, it also separates out any detail images. So if you want to, you know, you shot the rings, the gown, the flowers, the setting, and you you don't want to search through those, it pulls those all out so that you can select the ones that you want from there. And, and it. The, the I way thought we I, were just going to get rid of the details. They're not important <laughs> anyway. Yeah. It's all about the couple on the day. Yeah, absolutely. So it, what we're trying to do with it is is really help the photographers to improve that workflow, save them a tremendous amount of time, but only do, let's say, I wanted to do 80% of the work. We then put together a, a user interface that gives you total control to make the final selections. Um, and and that we're showcasing that here and at the. This at is the supporting show. like all camera brands and all. It is. It's just working with. Um, yeah, we're just okay. working with the files themselves. Gotcha. Right. Yeah. So we're just. You can do like a proprietary thing where they have to shoot on Kodak film in order for this software to work. It, no. You no. guys should think about doing that. It, no, it's a digital file thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Does it, it work with film scans? Well. I'm not starting there yet okay. because someone, you know, when you do a film scan, there you lose a lot of the metadata. So um, I'm not starting there. We're just completing the development on it. So before I get into, and there's so much we can do with the facial recognition technology that's sure. in it. There's so much we can do, but we're starting with the the digital file image selection to begin with, and then we can do some more things with image evaluation but perfect yeah it's really exciting so we're getting a great response to it oh it sounds we're awesome we're going to show you guys when we're off of this you know <laughs> yeah perfect anything else no i mean that was more than i yeah. thought we would be talking well, to you about i didn't realize you guys were breaking into like software to do oh, all this kind of stuff yeah. this is amazing yeah so. absolutely we also we're also showcasing another software that's not directly for photographers but indirectly it does we're helping online galleries connect with professional labs so that um, more photographers can avail themselves of an online gallery solution, right? So, so many times we know photographers get aligned to a particular lab. They, they love their lab. And um, an online gallery, if they want to take advantage of it, right. needs to connect with that lab. So we're going to help kind of do a matchmaking service <laughs> with a cloud database that acts as a translational yeah. uh, database to help receive and, and route order some online galleries to professional labs. Nice. Yeah. So we've been busy. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for your time. And, uh, All right. Perfect. Thank you, guys. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Hey, guys. I hope you loved our conversation with Kodak. Um, you know, I'm not going to I'm not gonna weigh this episode down with too much in-between talk. Next, we're going over to the uh, photo editors over at Image Salon. Hey, this is Dustin. I'm here with Christopher from... Uh, the Image Salon. The Image Salon, yes. I like that we knew who we were coming to talk to ahead of time, just, and you still had to pause and look back at the sign, like, <laughs> who, who is this? Where are, are you just, like, lost? They have one of the most amazing setups we've seen here. It's got this very sleek, minimal design, tables very clean, very with just, clean. like, iPads on it. Are those iPad Pros? They are iPad Pros, yeah. 13-inch, they're the biggest ones that we can get, so that's easier for people to take a look at the galleries and everything like that so but i just love um, your yeah. like clean like you've got your logo up there it's Thank not you. like crowded with images and yeah. you've hypnotized us and i think it's I what keep he's walking by and it. i'm like wow oh i'm glad so I'm glad for the you like listeners it. at home chris chris or christopher it, either one is fine yeah chris or christopher is fine yeah what do you what does the imaging salon do so the image salon we're a post-production company so okay. we offer both lightroom toning and photoshop retouching so depending on the scope of work that you're um, looking to outsource, we can 
you know, pretty much handle any situation. Okay. Most wedding photographers will, um, you know, send us their large wedding galleries, you know, 800 to 1,000 images. We take care of all the Lightroom work, um, so all the general sliders in Lightroom, establishing the client's preset. We have a very important onboarding process, so the client will actually um, speak with someone over a Skype screen share sure. with someone from our onboarding team mm -hmm. and go over their preferences and establish their client file. And, you know, we're really trying to replicate their style as closely as we possibly can. Um, How also, often during that Skype onboarding session do you guys have to pause and be like, did you calibrate your screen? <laughs> did you calibrate your screen? Because everything looks orange to me on this side. So that's a good question. And um, it's, yeah, it's a very touchy question. <laughs> so we... We can back away from that question. <laughs> we can no, go somewhere else. No, we, we, we uh, meet the, the question head on. We, um, we don't calibrate. We use our, the factory calibration for the most part on our mm -hmm. IMAX. Nice. Um, we, we have zero control over whether our clients are calibrating or you know whether or not they're not calibrating. We work with thousands of clients across the world on different setups, different monitors, different workstations all together. So we prefer to make relative adjustments right. to what the client's seeing. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where you know, you're know you assigned it, an, an editor that you work with year round and um, they actually, you know, so they're, you're working, the editor's working on the same screen. And if a client is seeing something a little bit too warm, a little bit too cool, magenta, green, dark, you know, bright. We'll make adjustments on our end. You know, until they're seeing, you know, what they're, what they want on their end. Yeah. So. Yeah. Do you have clients who you're like, so the way you edit is not very good. We Whoa. can make your editing better. So, we have stopped. Um, we don't feel that there's a good or bad. To be perfectly honest, sure. because we've literally seen it all. Um, right. We've seen all different types of styles. Um, what one photographer likes could be another's photographer, something that another photographer would dislike. So, you know, there's no good or bad. It's all we're all about finding the approach that that works for for our clients. So, okay. Yeah. What would you say separates you from other post production houses? So definitely the assigned editor. So you'll have their email. You can hop on a Skype call with them directly, and uh, you know, discuss, give them any feedback. Um, so it's really that one on one that we've been offering that set us apart from the competition. And are all of your editors based in house? Or yes. Do, okay. Yeah. So we have a studio of about a hundred editors up in Montreal, Canada. So okay. um, and yeah, everything stays in our studio. So yeah. So it's we, not like one of those where they send it off to the Philippines or something. No. no. So I so think we, that's a huge, huge deal. Yeah. Exactly. And. And, you know, that's where, um, you know, we, uh, we employ a lot of creatives in Montreal. And it's, you know, a great place to work. Um, a lot of amazing artists in our city. Absolutely. Um, and, yeah, we employ, obviously, photographers. But we have a lot of, like, graphic designers. Um, we have a sculptor. Um, you know, so it's, it's, you know, it's a process that you can train, you know, an artist to do. And, you know, to have a great creative team has just, you know, been one of our uh, our strengths from the beginning. You guys could follow us, you know, follow, search the Image Salon. You could find a lot of, um, you know, shots of our studio and everything and all the, uh, all the shenanigans. Does the studio look to. as nice as the booth? It's <laughs> beautiful. Our studio is gorgeous. Yeah, it's really nice. It's gray, minimalist, very, very Oh, very man, nice. I, I want to visit now. I, I want to visit. <laughs> come up. We're, you would we're, get lost in there. <laughs> I would have to get you, like, a three-month visa because I wouldn't be able to find you. You'd just be, like, <laughs> stuck in their building. It'd probably be pretty easy to find you, I guess. It is minimalist and everything, but... Yeah, no, we like, have, our studio is actually inside, away. like, an old textile building um, oh, that they converted cool. into, like, large, you know, style commercial lofts sort of thing. Perfect. So we have so a what's, big space there. So What's next for the Image Salon? So last year, um, you know, we're, we launched Photoshop retouching. So we really got started in weddings, um, in you know, large gallery Lightroom toning, and uh, yeah, we're really doing a full steam ahead in uh, Photoshop retouching and really being, um, you know, high end, high touch uh, retouching. So perfect. You know, yeah, love it. Yeah. Well, thank you, Christopher. I appreciate your time. Well, thank you very much, and appreciate Have you stopping one. by our booth. I hope you guys like that one. Their booth was immaculate. Dustin wasn't the only one who loved it. I also loved it. It was very nice, very clean, real fresh look to it. Um, next up, we're going to talk to the people at a, it's like this small little camera company. I don't know if most of you guys have heard of it or not, but you know, they're, 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 they're a little upstart just, just trying to make things happen over at um, Sony cameras. So we're going to talk with them real quick, maybe give them a leg up in this world. All right. This is Dustin. I'm here with Mike from Sony. How you doing? 
we're here at Imaging. Uh, Mike, we're just going to ask you a few questions about like, you know, different things you guys are trying to not push, but like things yeah, that you're course. trying to show off here at Imaging. Awesome. Can you tell me about any of that? Well, here at Imaging, I mean, a lot of our announcements for the year have already been made. We came right. out. Uh, I mean, at Sony, it's always a busy year, right? So, I mean, this year we came out with four new cameras, four new Alpha cameras. New lenses. It's just always a really busy year for us. So. Are you afraid that that's too many cameras and too many lenses? <laughs> Never afraid that that's too many cameras. Never, definitely not too many lenses because we needed to build up our lenses quickly, right? Because right. our full frame lineup started in 2013, so in six years we came out with you know an entire lineup of lenses that really there's no gaps in the lineup. So there's really anything for everybody, right. and even this year. I know there were a lot of people that were worried about our APS-C lineup, that they weren't getting enough lens additions. And this year we came out with what I think is probably one of the best made lenses that we've ever made, which is our new 16 to 55 28 for the E-mount. Wow. So. I mean, I got to say, I'm primarily a Canon shooter. Okay. Uh, and this year seeing the uh, like all the G Master lenses and yeah. stuff like that, feeling sorely tempted. Feeling <laughs> sorely tempted. Well, it's not just that, too. Dustin and I, we both shoot video on cool. top of shooting photo, yeah. too. And uh, the the Sony A seven R three is it, or is it the S three? Uh, whichever one it is that can shoot video and record to two SD cards at the same time. So uh, yeah, that's, that's the R four. Like the biggest thing I want. That's the R four, the nine two, the yeah. nine. So they can all do it at the same time. So it's it's pretty impressive. And the good thing about what we've done from the beginning, we've had an advantage, right? Because when we started doing this, when we started with mirrorless, we didn't have a gigantic user base that we had to cater to, right? So we right. were able to think outside the box, we were able to do something from scratch, and we created an amount and we created a system that was really very forward thinking at the time, and, and you could see some of the benefits, and you could see everybody starting to get into what we thought was the future back in 2011, and everyone's kind of copying that now, or getting into it now. Right. And like what you said in terms of the G Master lenses, we've done something that no one's done before. We also rethought how lenses are made. We came out with our a completely new way to design lenses and to create lenses because it used to be that you'd have lenses that either had extreme sharpness or you had lenses that had extreme bokeh. You never really had both. Right. Now we're able to do both of those things and we're also able to make them just as versatile with in video as they are for stills. So mm -hmm. almost all of our lenses have magnetic driven AF systems so they're completely silent, they're very fast, um, they're just it really is the future of lenses. So it's not just image quality, but it's also the experience that you get with how fast they can focus and how accurate they can focus, where we can move that focusing mechanism 10,000 times per second as opposed to six times per second or 16 times per second, which some of the other lenses out there on the market can do that. 10,000 so. better than six? Is Sometimes. that what I'm hearing? It depends hearing? on what you're doing, yeah. So, so <laughs> how sick are you of people asking you about the A7S III? I'm not sick of it. I ask for it all the time, too. <laughs> <laughs> Do we need to edit this one out of the podcast? <laughs> no, that's right. So, because so no big announcements today? on No big announcements for A7S III. I mean, I do. It's, it's a tricky situation now because when the A7S II, when it first came out, wasn't primarily designed for video. Obviously, it took over for video. It was a happy surprise. But it was designed for extreme low light. It was designed for a very high dynamic range. And of course, it was all of our cameras are designed with video in mind as well as stills. Right. So that was an added benefit of it. And obviously, as you know, it took off. We've oh, shot yeah. feature like films with it. We've yeah. shot about, I think, 18 feature films have been shot with it, commercials, everything. So people are eagerly awaiting an A7S Mark III. As of right now, I have no idea what the plans are for it. And I always try to envision it. We always try to like have round tables with professionals like yourselves and try to think about what needs to be in that camera, what, what our wish list is, so to speak. And every time we come up with that wish list, we come up with a camera that's already made, but not in the alpha system. It's like our FX9, which is our full frame video camera. Right. And it's at a price that it would have to be in order to have all those features in a full frame camera as well. Right. So it's, it's, it's a difficult camera to attack. It's a difficult camera mm -hmm. to kind of really think up. And I'm ex just as excited as you guys to think about what's gonna what it's gonna be. Sure. If it is. <laughs> yeah, I just bought the new. I don't know if it's new, but the 135 1.8. Oh, yeah. Fr Freaking love that lens. That's a perfect example of how ridiculously good our lenses are, and it just changes things because a 135. You've never been able to shoot sports with any 135. It's never been fast focusing enough. Right. And also 1.8. So now you can shoot wide open with a 135 
and have focusing that's fast enough and be able to track a pupil of an eye right. with an A9 Mark II or even the A7R4 and be able to do things that or the you never thought possible. Or the A7 III. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> but anything else you want to talk? There's a lot of camera companies here. Yeah. Um, do you think, do you feel like, do you feel like imaging is really beneficial for Sony? Imaging for Sony, like, because Sony's a big, co so we're different than Canon, yeah. right? Because their main company is is imaging. Yep. Sony, we have our hands in a lot of things, but imaging is one of our most profitable and also one of our main businesses that we do. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's ironic, but insurance is actually our number one business. In, in really? Sony, in, to, in Japan and things like that. But in terms of electronics, Sony Electronics, digital imaging is one of our main priorities. And you can see that incorporated in all of our technologies. You can see it in our cell phones. You can see our image sensors, even in our, some of our TVs. You can see it mm -hmm. in our new car that we created. So you can see it in kind of every aspect of everything that we create is all kind of one thing. So Sony's kind of monitoring us wherever we are is what I'm hearing here. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> wow. So have and you gotten to drive that new car? No. I just saw that. It's pretty interesting. I haven't. I wasn't at CES this year, unfortunately, but it looked pretty sweet. I mean, it looked really I don't think sweet. we're really making a car. We're showing off the technology that we can create to just make the future of cars, so to speak. Right. So and just kind of... You know, oh. Tesla and I made beyond. a huge mistake shorting all my Tesla stock then. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> all right, last question, Mike. Uh, where's Nikon at this show? I didn't see him. I don't think they're here. Did you yeah. guys see him? Nope. Yeah. They nope. had a huge presence at CES, so I got to give them that. And they had a new camera. New camera looks pretty nice. I mean, there's a lot of digital SLRs still being made. Canon, you know, just made one. Yeah. And that's impressive piece of mechanics. Um, but not mechanics imaging. being the number one word because... There's a lot of moving parts. It's a very mechanical camera, and I think it's kind of reached the pinnacle of what mechanical cameras can do, and it's right. impressive. But I think mirrorless, as they know, is also the future of imaging because there's certain things you just can't do with a mirror. There's certain right. things you can't do with a pentaprism, and as we saw you know, almost a decade ago, we really think mirrorless is, is the future. So. Yeah, absolutely. I agree as someone who just switched to Sony back in December. Awesome. So. Which camera did you get? Uh, we for photo we got just two A7 threes. Cool. Um, and my wife and I, which both husband wife team, yeah. love shooting with awesome. them. Awesome. Um, we're able to do things we weren't able to do before because when we shot on Nikon, I never felt comfortable going below like f2. Oh yeah. Uh, and now I'm shooting it like wide open on like the 135, and uh, we have the 50. It's and, incredible. Yeah. I mean, I always tell people like I feel like I'm cheating yeah. because it enables you to not have to think about the it's funny because we have such technical cameras right but you don't have to think about the technical part of it you don't have to think about focusing you don't have to think about doing these things you can just trust the camera to get 100 percent of the shots focused and then you can just worry about composition and working with your subject and things so it's it's pretty amazing plus so. what you see in the electronic viewfinder is what your picture is going to look yep. like so yeah. you're shooting less yeah. so Shooting less, you don't have to sit there and chimp and look at your exactly. pictures and miss shots. So your eyes are always on the scene. It's. But what it's if I like chimping? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. I think that's going to do it for us. Thank you, Mike, for your time. All right, no problem. Thank you. All right. Thanks so much, Mike. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks. Oh, so close. So close to getting them to talk to us about products that haven't come out yet or maybe just giving us free cameras. You know, <laughs> you never know what's going to happen in one of these conversations. Obviously, none of those things happened. But, but, they, they wouldn't have happened no matter what. Let's be honest about it. Ah, but we got another great interview coming up with CG Pro Prince. Hi, I'm Steve from the Wedding Photo Hangover. Dustin and I are standing here today with Jose Perez from CG Pro Prince. Jose, can you tell us a little bit about why CG Pro Prince is here at Imaging this year? Yeah, uh, well, actually, there's a, it's a interesting story. I started uh, CG Pro Prince with some colleagues back in 2010, 2011. Yeah. Uh, and I was, I ran the show, I ran, I ran CG Pro Prints up to 2016, and then I moved on, and very recently I was asked to come back to uh, to uh, uh, CG Pro Prints, take it over again, and run as general manager. And uh, we actually have, this is actually the first time we've been at Imaging USA since I, I was running the, the brand back in 2016. Uh, we love Imaging, uh, Imaging USA, we love WPPI, we love all those big shows. I think it's, it's a great place that photographers, where they, they come from across the country, from across the world, to come in and talk to, to us and learn about us. 
Yeah. If I remember correctly, isn't CG Pro Prints, or at least like the parent company of CG Pro Prints, like primarily like a billboard company? Yeah, uh, the parent company of CG Pro Prints is Circle Graphics, therefore the CG. Sure. Uh, and we pretty much print most of the billboards in the country. So if you, you see a billboard somewhere, chances are it was printed by really? us. Really? That's right. crazy. Uh, and then in 2010 is where we started to work on Canvas. And then we work on canvas wraps, and they use it. but it's a completely different division. Obviously, we also do signage, we do all kinds of things, but uh, yeah, it's part of Circle Graphics. I personally use CG Pro Prints, and I I love the products. I'm personally confused. Circle Graphics, but aren't most billboards rectangles? <laughs> I'm just messing with you. <laughs> that was like an interesting marketing move. Yes. <laughs> but um, I'm excited. I saw your booth. Uh, yesterday and as somebody whose house is all like that new like gold and like black accents uh, I saw the new gold frames you guys are coming out with is that something like you're pushing more into the framing side of things yeah I think I think one of the things we're doing is uh, what we do at CG Properance is we're very different than other labs other labs offer every every option for every product imaginable and what we do is we only do a very few products but we 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 were able to pass on the savings of being able to use economies of scale in those products. And I think lately we we launched the Acrylic Pro, we have our canvas, and we want to find just another another expansion into the framing area. Again, not 50 options, but the most common options. But we, be, being able to again sell you something that you can resell to your clients, and not you know cut into your into your earnings by you know selling something five or ten times while allowing your customer to still be able to afford the product. Sure. Mm -hmm. What uh, what would you say like the most popular size of uh, canvas your clients order? Uh, 16 by 20 and 11 by 14s yeah. are definitely, I think that's everybody's uh, standards, but uh, we recently launched a 40 by 60 canvas for really? $199 and actually has been moving pretty well. So I think... Uh, as an industry, because now anybody can buy a canvas online. You can go online and find this cheap, get it, get cheap it places Walgreens. and get a yeah. Walgreens. I think for a photographer to differentiate, differentiate, differentiate yourself, you have to either go very big or do groupings, right? Mm -hmm. Canvas groupings. And that's really what I recommend for photographers who want to differentiate themselves and show that they're doing different than what anybody can get at Walgreens. So big, go big or go several canvases at once. Absolutely. Um, I had one other question that I just spaced. Uh, when you talk about doing canvas groupings, um, is this like taking one photo and splitting it up across like five or six different canvases? Or are you talking about just like a grouping of different photos from the same set that are all together? Uh, either way. I, I think if you, if you are a landscape photographer, yeah. you might do, I think they call them clusters when they split them up. Yep or splits, uh, but I, I think for the wedding photography, for newborn photography, is more about capturing several moments from the wedding or the rehearsal or, or the engagement, or anything like that, into one single collage. So yeah. different images into one, one grouping, yes. Oh, that's awesome. Love it. Uh, and where are you guys based out of? We are in Colorado, uh, Logman, Colorado. Uh, we do have other smaller facilities across the country, so you might get something from North Carolina often, but most of the time is everything's done in, in Longmont. Gotcha. Perfect. Right by Boulder. <laughs> well, Jose, we know you have a very busy booth. We don't want to keep you too long, so thank you so much for talking wait, with us today. Well, last question. Oh, wait. Is your house covered in canvases? No. <laughs> Surprisingly, uh, that what is that what is that saying? The the cobbler's son has no shoes or yep, something yep. like that. Uh, we do have some canvases. I'm actually starting to put in some acrylics. I think Ooh. acrylic is, is really my favorite product right now. Yeah. But I do have some canvases. Uh, my office is covered by canvases. <laughs> but once you see, I mean, I have, I, I've probably seen a million canvases in my life at this point. But you're yeah. like, I'm done with canvases. No, I, I love them. <laughs> I love them. Uh, so I, I just moved, honestly, just moved to a new house. But I haven't had the chance to really print my own stuff. Sure. But uh, do you, that's something do you, I'm going to Do you plan. take pictures as well? Are you a photographer? I try to be. Yeah? But I'm definitely not a pro like like everybody in this co co convention. Gotcha. Perfect. I love it. Thank you, Jose. Anything Thank you. else you want to talk to or add? It's totally up to you. No pressure. I think, I think we're okay. good. Okay. Cool. Thanks so much, Jose. Have a great day. I hope you guys love that talk with CG Pro Prince.
you know, I would love to continue on with more interviews, but in the middle of all this crass commercialism where we basically just interviewed a bunch of people selling stuff about what they were selling, um, you know, let's take a moment for me and Dustin to actually make some money with some crass commercialism. So we're going to do a few ads and then we'll get back to the show. Hey guys, welcome back from those delicious, delicious ads. I, I hope you guys love them as much this week as you do every other week. It was crazy. I imagine there was maybe five, six different booths all selling these like electrode systems that you would like put on you and they would massage you. And they all had explicit instructions not to put them on your genitals, which, <laughs> you know, I think goes without saying or does it. I don't know. Let's get into it. We're going to talk with Izzy. Hey there, we're here with Izzy at Imaging USA. Uh, Izzy, what are you guys doing here at Imaging today? Um, we're here showing our massages for you, like your upper back, your lower back. They're portable TENS units that get rid of your knots, your tension. All these photographers here are you know, working hard with their hands up all day or they're on the computer editing. They get these knots on their necks. Um, we're here to loosen that up for them and then you know, provide them a good massage experience at the show to show what we're providing. Do you guys have multiple booths or like all of you guys we here have a, together? We have two booths here providing the same product, but there is other competitions. It's a very pro popular product in this industry. Absolutely. What sets you guys apart from the competition? Um, ours are very portable. They're very small. They take it's only an hour to charge, lasts you 60 hours, and it's the way they feel. It's very, very comfortable, smooth. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of these people like to take this with them instead of going to see their chiropractors. That's, you know, they don't have a lot of time. They're working hard. They like to take the product with them on the go so they can loosen up their muscles. So just on the record, this replaces the need for a chiropractor? I wouldn't want to save your place, <laughs> but it'll you can, stop you visit. You can say, you can you say can that say right that. here because I think chiropractors are quacks anyway. All right, so. well, I guess no one's looking. <laughs> yeah, it's cheaper, guys. It's Way cheaper. <laughs> Perfect. What, when you're not at Imaging, are you guys at other conferences selling yeah, these we products? Do multi, we do multiple conferences. We have about 500 to 600 expos a year. Wow. From all industries, from medical to you know spa and beauties to like a, we did a cannabis show recently. It was was very interesting for us. Yeah, but they sell be, everywhere. You know, everybody's got pain. Yeah, bring it up a little higher. Right. So, what would you say um, most people here? What's their interest in? Is it for mostly like the shoulders and the neck? It's or? usually upper back pain, lower back pain. You know, some got husband wife pain. You know, <laughs> they're trying to get rid of little things. Is anybody um, using them like on their ass, like pain in the ass? You know, we got car batteries for that. It'll get Ooh. rid of that pain. <laughs> Whoa. I love it. Um, so we got like the tens unit. I see like got some like sandals or something. Yeah, or? they're little foot massages. They actually plug into the unit. They're, oh. they're little um, foot um, stimulators. They're little. After like a long day walking, running, the little, you know, loosens up your muscles, gets rid of the cramps and the calves, good for the feet, usually for pain relief usually too. Do you do this show every year? Yeah, this is actually my fourth year at Imaging. Really? Yes. So it's a good show for you guys. It is a good show for us. It's why, plus why we have competition all over the place. Gotcha. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, so what does a typical uh, unit sell for? They retail about three ninety nine at a doctor's office. Here we do our Amazon price at two ten, dollars um, but we do provide you like the free goodies of the shoes. You get a five-year warranty, a voucher. Mm -hmm. um, we just keep you the goodies out the show. So what would you sell one of these to our listeners for? Um, you know what? Just because of you guys coming by and making my day great, I'll give them a buy one, get one free at that price. Really? Yes. And I will tell you, how would I give them? We'll drop something in the notes. This Perfect. Show. Right below, guys. <laughs> Perfect. So we stopped at another booth, one of your competitors yesterday. Correct. And we tried on their thing on our shoulders. And when Dustin went to take his off, it shocked him. So the fingers are very sensitive. Yeah. So because it's on the, in your fingertips, you feel a more shocking experience. Yeah. Um, if you have to see the levels, they go from anywhere from one level to 20. And yeah. I usually tell people, like, level 3, 4 is what you use it, use it at. But when yep. you get to level 15, the truth starts coming out of you. <laughs> the yep. truth starts coming out. <laughs> yeah, I promise. It, it now becomes a torture, torture device. Yeah. Like everything else, great goes great with champagne as well, guys. <laughs> goes great with champagne. Uh, back pain, neck pain, we got champagne. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that it. should be your slogan right there. <laughs> All right, I thank love it. Thank you so much for no, talking with us for a few you. minutes, Izzy. Appreciate thank it. you. I hope you guys love that conversation we just had with Izzy. Um, my wife, my wife, she actually has one of these electrode things, and she uses it from time to time on her back and stuff, and it does seem to help. It just scares the crap out of me because, you know, it's it's electricity going straight into my body. And I don't think my body was made for that. Um, and when I did try one of these on at imaging, it did hurt really, really bad. And uh, that was at the very lowest setting I could put it at. And it just felt like there was a giant just squeezing me like, like a lemon. So 
enough talk about pain management, which I obviously don't know anything about. Uh, we're we're going to go over to the the people at Salsa. I feel like that can't be the name. That can't be the name. Salsa is the the photo booth that they sell, right? I think it's the photo booth. We're going to talk to the people at Photo Booth Supply Company about Salsa. That's it. Nailed it. All right. So I'm Dustin, and I'm here with Brandon from the Photo Booth Supply Company. Um, he's here at Imaging USA. Brandon, what are you here selling, doing? What what's, what do you got going on? What's going on, guys? So you guys just literally approached me just now. I'm super excited and super thankful to be on this podcast uh, to have you guys visualize what we're doing right now. We're literally sitting in a circle on the floor in the middle of a trade show <laughs> doing this podcast. So this is pretty awesome. Um, this is the best my feet me. have felt all day. So. I know. This is a good idea, guys. Um, so, yeah, we are Photo Booth Supply Co. We started this as wedding photographers, actually. And we tried to scale our business. And we tried hiring associate photographers and tried going it that way. But, I mean, you guys know it's hard to hire someone who is creative, technical, and not a weirdo. Right. Right. And not poaching your business and starting their own. So. Exactly. <laughs> and you know what? At the end, I figured I was only making $1,000 at the end of the day uh, hiring an associate photographer out. And if I actually calculated how many hours I worked, I was pretty much making one minimum wage. Yeah. Right. And risking my business liability, my, my five-star reviews, etc. So we said, how do we turn this associate photographer into a robot that doesn't get pregnant, doesn't show up late, <laughs> can, you know, doesn't lose focus, you know, can just get their stuff done? And here comes a photo booth. Our customers are already asking for it. They're paying a ton of money for it, right? Might as well add it on. So we built our own photo booth. We started making a ton of money off of it. And then we also noticed a bunch of photographers asking us, hey, we have the same problem as you. We're trying to scale our photography business, and I can't, right? It can only make so much money a year. And as self-employed people, we yep. don't have the benefit of having an employer match our 401 clay plans. We don't have any pension plans. Like, what are we doing when we retire, right? right? My back, we're, we're sitting on the ground for a reason, guys. Like, our bodies are hurting, from doing wedding photography all day. My right arm is like permanently damaged from holding at 7200. So <laughs> it's like, I'm serious, like only my right arm is carpal tunnel, like it's bad. So we try to figure out a way to help photographers stop losing money, make more money um, while working less. And that's what I we're here it. to do. We sell a turnkey, a complete, fun, profitable addition to your photography business. So you tell me, could get the robot to hold a seventy to two hundred for you? Is that what <laughs> no. I'm hearing? <laughs> they couldn't do it as well as me. No, yeah. no, no. Yeah, I'm. I'm just envisioning this iteration of your product where you were like, okay, what if we took what we did with PhotoBiz and we make that into a wedding photographer? That's Eva, the robot. That's we right. know yeah. about this. Oh, have you seen that the robot that like wheels around at weddings, looks creepily like a human slash robot thing? And then, like, does photos of people. Wow. There's, like, one in the world. It's not, like, a huge thing. Okay. It's, just, okay. it's in the U.K. Yeah, it's, like, a proof of concept or something. And, ugh. Man. Creep me out. Could be possible. It's, like, essentially, like, <laughs> taking what you have and putting it on a Roomba. I like it, I say it, creep exactly. me out. And, like, your head, you're like, that sounds great. This is a possibility. This is the future of the business. <laughs> Done. Is that what my face says? <laughs> Oops. Uh, no, yeah. I thought about it, actually. Have an army of drone wedding photographers out there, but then the drone blades might kill people. Like, it would just it would be a mess. So, you know, this is stationary. No drones. No drone uh, <laughs> um, blades running around. It's Every revolution has casualties, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Hey guys, we're on to something. So All right, let's <laughs> drop this podcast now and start this drone thing. I want to hear about salsa. Yeah, let's do it. So tell me, what, what do you got going on? I, at one point, wanted to buy one of these. Oh, yeah. And then two of my competitors in town Chickened out bought one like pretty much at the same time. So yeah. I was like, I don't know if my city can support two of these photo yeah. booths. So sell me on this. Can, can a city support more than two of these bad boys well I'll, I'll ask you what sold you on salsa and why did you want to integrate into your wedding photography business i'll well, ask your question later yeah but yeah well i i shouldn't say salsa sold me i yeah. always wanted one of your photo booths yeah and i never could pull the trigger because just financially and it was back when you had the one where you would have the printer separately and then it was just like the metal pole with the box and then the umbrella mm -hmm. and i wanted that and then when i went to go to pull the trigger you weren't offering that anymore now you were offering this mm-hmm and so I looked into this, and then I saw on Instagram, like, that night, two people in my area had just picked up two of these. So I was like, ah, oh, maybe I'll wait and see, like, how they do with it yeah. before pulling the trigger. Yeah, that's a great question. So the question, Dustin, is, like, you know, as a wedding photographer, 
I think it is mandatory to get a photo booth. If you're not having one, you're losing money. Even if you're shooting 10 weddings a year and you get 10 of those booked for a photo booth, salsa is only three grand. Like even if you book it out for $600 for an event, which I don't recommend, you should charge more than that. But $6,000 a year you're making. Right. That's already a two x your cost of salsa, a hundred percent investment increase. Like, and every year from that, it's another six grand, ten grand, fifteen grand. And our average photo booth owner, we did a survey, they make around seventy-one grand a year. Wow. On average. Wow. On the higher end of things, we have some photo booth owners making one point two million, a one point five million. I assume that's multiple boosts at that point. Yeah, they have. It's multiple, just one multiple, booth. Multiple, multiple. It's out every single day. It charges it's 10 grand. Drones. 10 grand <laughs> per booth. Yeah, but I understand your worry though cuz like what if the market's saturated? I mean the same argument can be made for wedding photography, right? Sure. The two other friends getting wedding photography, oh, should I do it? But look, you're still booking events. I tell all my friends who ask if they should get into wedding photography, no, cuz I don't want the competition. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a lot more applications for our photo booth other than just weddings. Yeah, we got birthday parties, we got corporate events, holiday parties, we got festivals, galas, sporting events, I've concerts, seen them at, like school events and stuff too. School events yeah. like Sadie's Winter Formal, Homecoming, right? And if you have any sort of connection with any of these events, the great thing is these events are recurring; they happen every single year. So you book one of these events, let's say a corporate holiday party, you can pretty much guarantee that their holiday party is going to happen. Uh, the next year after that, and the year after that. Right. But for a wedding, hopefully, knock on wood, they only get married once. <laughs> right. Absolutely. <laughs> but hopefully, they don't book you again for the next year and the year after that, you know, so it's a little tough. Right. Yeah, I totally understand sense, that. Though, if you're doing a lot of corporate events, too, because corporate events, that's like a Monday through Friday thing. You have so many more days available to be shooting those, so you have so many more days where your photo booth could be making more money. Yeah. And you know what, Stephen? How if, does that work for you? It's explaining how the like business works and stuff, or yeah. you good? Yeah, yeah. I, I think you we're got good. It? I think we're good. So are you buying one of these or what? <laughs> do, do the new ones do prints? Or you is can. It? We so we actually have AirPrint being shown off right now, actually. So you can actually print wirelessly <laughs> over to the AirPrint printers. Um, but actually, you touched upon a good point, Stephen. Um, you have Saturday and Sunday you're shooting weddings, maybe a Friday wedding every now and then, right? But you're not doing anything Monday to Thursday that's providing value. You might be editing or answering emails, but you're not actually going out there and making money. So that's when most of these corporate events are having. These festivals are happening. These whatever things are happening in your area are happening. Yep. But another big thing is our photo boothers make most of their money during the winter time when we're slow. At least that's in, in California. We're slow. Yeah. Oh, super slow in Indiana. Yeah, everybody. super slow. Yeah. <laughs> Not many people want to get married when it's freezing cold. It's it, weird. Yeah, and even California is only like 50 degrees and nobody wants to get married. Oh, it's freezing um, cold for California, yeah, though. Yeah, that is, that is true. hate to admit. But for most photo boothers, many of them make 30, 40, even 50% of the revenue from November to January. Wow. Because it's Halloween parties, holiday parties, and sometimes they might get booked up five times a day for these events. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And most of it comes from holiday parties and corporate parties. And they have the budget for it, man. They're not a bride and groom, like, scraping to get by um, on their wedding budget. They blew, like, 10 grand on flowers, you know. Like, these are corporate parties, and they've given a big budget, and they need to spend it. Yep. So why not? So do the, uh, not to get back to technical stuff, but do these new photo booths work with the older, like, DNS or DNP, like, 4x6 printers? Yeah, as long as your printer has an air print uh, compatibility. So you can have that enabled via like a dongle. And that we're literally running a dongle right now. So you connect the dongle and it makes the printer AirPrint compatible. Or um, you could just use a, a built-in AirPrint printer. So a lot of those times are like a like Canon selfie line or something like that, or the inkjet. The picture quality won't be great. So you, you're going to want to attach one of these like AirPrint dongles to a nice DNP die cell printer like that. Cool. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, that's what, when I was hoping to get one of your original photo booths, I was slowly buying, like, you know, the Paul C. Buff strobe to go yeah. on top. I was buying, the you know, the printer that you guys recommended so that I would be ready for the photo booth when I could pull the trigger. I love but it. I, I never, love it. never did. Never did. But, <laughs> you know what, though, Dustin, like, the, with the salsa, that we really, really push digital only. And the reason why Salsa has been the number one selling photo booth for wedding photographers, for at least that we've seen, is that you don't have to deal with the hassle of paper and ink 
and replacing it and paper jams and troubleshooting networking issues or USB issues. If it's a digital only booth, all you need to do is make sure it's connected to the internet and you're good to go. Right. And even if you don't have internet, it'll queue up all the images. People can still text and email. They'll just send out when you do get connected to the internet later on. Is there any kind of like a monthly fee or anything that goes along with the photo booth? Yeah, well, there's a lot that we provide with the software. We provide continual updates, provide new and improved features. You can charge more money. Um, we're also trying to release features that help you save time. So we're in a couple of weeks, we're going to release a web app. Essentially, it allows you to create all your events, edit your events from your phone. Wow. So you can actually, like, it, let's say you have that million-dollar photo booth company and you have like 50 photo booths out in the wild. You can control all of them from your phone. Change the LED color, change the event name, um, change how it looks, everything with your finger on your phone. That sounds super easy. Yeah, we want you to be able to run your photo booth company from your bed. <laughs> or from your beach yeah, side your condo. <laughs> exactly, exactly, yeah. Perfect. Well, see, thanks, Brandon. It was a joke when I asked if Dustin was going to buy one, but he was really thinking about buying one, as you can see. <laughs> now the wheels are spinning. All right. Well, <laughs> well, let's hook you up, man. We'll make it happen. Awesome. Anything else you want to talk about? Or I think I'm I good. Think all my questions have been answered. Thank you so yeah, much for sitting absolutely. down with us, giving yeah. us a chance to rest our feet today. It's been amazing. Yeah, it's a plus pleasure. And if any of you listeners want to find out more about Photo Booth Supply Co. or just want to find out if a photo booth might be right for your business, uh, head over to photoboothsupplyco.com. We have free guides on how to price your photo booth, how to start a photo booth business. Uh, we have free marketing materials that you can send out to your current brides and grooms to see if they're be interested in it. Um, we also have a profit calculator to see actually how much you can make off a photo booth business. And we also have a demand calculator. You can just enter in your state, and it'll tell you how many Google searches a year are in your state. So wow. we got all the resources to see if this is the right fit for you. That's fantastic. <laughs> you guys really thought this one through. I, yeah. It's like you guys are running a competent business. This is so crazy. It's like you guys are trying to make money. We try. <laughs> it's like you guys are trying to help photographers make money. We're trying to money. make you guys make money. <laughs> exactly, Steven. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks Perfect. for having me on the show, guys. Appreciate it. It was fun. Thanks, thanks Brandon. So much, have a good Brandon. one. I hope you guys loved listening to Dustin figure out that he was definitely going to get a salsa booth for, uh, you know, his company. You know, I feel like that was probably not helpful for everybody listening as they just listen to Dustin slowly circle in on what he wants out of life. So I'm just going to say, by now, Dustin already has a salsa. This is a thing that has happened in his life. It's completely changed his life, I believe. I can't actually say that. But but he does have one. I saw a photo of it online. So this, this conversation sold him on the product. And finally, for, for the end of our, our first day of interviews, guys, we're going to talk to the people at Mag, Mag, Magmod? Madmog. Mogmad. We're going to talk to the Decepticons at Magnet Modifications. We're going to talk to the people at Magnet Modifications. Magnet Modifiers. Where does Magmod come from? Model Magnets. So, hey, this is Dustin. I'm here with Trevor with uh, Magmod here at Imaging USA. How are you doing, Trevor? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for stopping by. So what are you guys doing? What's Magmod all about? Yeah, so Magmod is, is we're about creating light modifiers, uh, making photography, as we like to say, fast, easy, and awesome for photographers. We find that, you know, a lot, a lot of times photographers will be shooting, they, when they first get into the industry, they start doing natural light photography. Sure. And they look at flash and they think, oh, man, that would be fun to do, but I just don't have the time. You know, I, on a wedding, I just don't have time to bust out flashes and modify it and color it and things like that. So what, basically what Magmod did is we came out with a way for photographers to be able to do that, modify their light, color it. Mm -hmm. uh, snoot it, grid it, whatever you want to do with your flash, and do it quickly. Sure. Yeah. Uh, are you guys doing anything for videographers? Are there any video people Ooh, that's using a great question. the products? You know, I love that question because it is one of those things where I would say we're all photographers here at Magmod, at least a lot of us are. Yeah. And so it, definitely photography was the number one thing on our mind when we first came out with the modifiers. However, we do have a new Magbox that came out about nine months ago. Already have one. Yeah, and the Magbox that uh, a lot of videographers have been able to use that um, either with, you know, they can put some video lights in it. Uh, we have Bowens mounts and Ellen Chrome mounts and different kinds of mounts they can use for it. Um, yeah. But one thing I, I always mention to videographers when they stop by the booth, they'll ask us, they'll say, like, is there something for videographers? One thing they love is with the Magbox, we have a focus diffuser. And that focus mm -hmm. diffuser allows that video light to come through the Magbox very, very efficiently. So they get a nice diffusion, 
without losing the loss, you know, loss of one or two stops that you normally get through another diffusion panel. So mm -hmm. uh, the focus diffuser and the mag box is definitely where I point videographers. Nice. Yeah. What's the uh, future of MagMod? What are you guys doing next? Yeah, yeah, no, I appreciate you asking. So I'd have to have you sign an NDA as well as all your listeners. I've got pens. <laughs> Just kidding. No, but uh, I would say, so Mag MagMod, you know, you know, we definitely want to keep making things easier. We don't want to just, you know, take something that everybody knows and can go buy wherever they want and, and, and improve it a little bit. We want to actually make it much better. And, and so I think one of the things that probably slows us down from launching new products constantly is just because, like I said, we want to be different, right? Um, so we do have some things on the horizon. We we did come out and say that in May we're going to be launching a new announcement or oh. we're going to be launching something. So uh, definitely be on the lookout for that. Do you have to um, sign the NDA just to know that no, announced no, coming out in May? I haven't said anything yeah, yet. Just wanted to check. I just want to check, yeah. Um, and I will say that we do have a few more things on the horizon that we've been thinking about, and hopefully we can get another one of those out before the end of the year. Um, that's our goal is to kind of get two uh, different products out before I, by the end of this year. Um, I say two types of products, probably a better word. Um, but I can't say much more than that. Um, oh. But I, I will say it's going to be a big announcement, and I think people are going to be really excited about it. How did you, Trevor, get involved <laughs> with MagMod? Because yeah. you were like, you know, awesome wedding photographer. You did portraits, I, if yeah, I remember yeah, I did as well. Portraits, yeah. And then so, now you're like the MagMod man. No, no, I appreciate that. You know, it's funny because I still do weddings. I it, it, MagMod is. Uh, uh, I, I work full time with MagMod. You know, travel to trade shows. I do a lot of education with them. So if people go check out our YouTube channel. They'll see a lot of educational videos with, sadly, my ugly face in front of <laughs> it. These podcasts are better because yeah, people don't have to look at me. Yeah, the reason this right? is an audio podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we're gonna do video <laughs> right oh, now just because you don't want to see me. No, um, but but I think people appreciate uh, you know the educational content that we put out there for them. Um, and then I still do wedding uh, photography as well. So I'm still shooting about 20 or 30 weddings a year. And, and I think that's important because, in fact, all of us, uh, oh, again, I say all of us. I know there's a few that are on a team are not, but many of us on the Magmon team are photographers. And I think yeah. that's important that you can't stop doing that because the moment I stop doing it, I start losing touch with what photographers' pain points are. What are things that are bothering photographers or what are difficult? When I'm out on a wedding, what is slowing me down? What is making it difficult? Right. And so I think what it's important that we are continually to work. What are some of the pain points you've been having the last year? Ooh. <laughs> so I think, you know, I, I um, <laughs> it's funny because you asked that and I almost, I almost want to answer you. I was, was trying to get you to give away the next product. <laughs> that, I'm not going to lie. No. Uh, yeah, that's a good question. It's a um, Lightroom killer. That's the product. Yeah, it is a yeah. Lightroom no, killer. No, I, I probably, you know, I don't know how to answer that without probably giving away too much. But but I will say this. I, as far as me coming on to Magma Team, I have been shooting for about 12 years. My wedding's on my own. And basically what happened about five years ago, I had discovered MagMod. I was writing for a, a blog called F Stoppers and yeah. writing articles for them. And, and basically um, I came across the MagMod products, started using their products. And basically the owner, Spencer Bowerup, um, awesome guy, photographer as well. In fact, he's an incredible uh, senior photographer. That's really where he made his uh, headway in photography in Arizona. Anyhow, I basically said, hey, man, like, I love your products. And he started having me help create videos and content. I think I was like the fifth employee or maybe sixth employee. Um, and so I've been with the company ever since. I, I took a few months off just while my mom was sick, but uh, otherwise I've been with the company and like I said, creating products, helping them come out with new things and, and just helping people learn how to use it. So, that's, that's super fun. Yeah. Um, what, what, can I ask what kind of camera system you shoot with? Yeah. I, I personally, I've been using the EOS R uh, since about a year and a half, December. No. What are we in? <laughs> what month is this? Janu <laughs> January. January, yeah, February. January. Um, it's winter. It's, it's winter. <laughs> a little over a year ago is when I started using the USR. And uh, it was actually funny. Canon, after doing a talk at their, their facility uh, in California, they sent me one to try out. And after two weeks, I had to send it back to them. And I literally, the day I sent it back, I bought one on Amazon. Um, but I love the Canon EOS R is what I use. Uh, I know it has the one card slot that everybody's worried about. But I've been shooting 30 weddings with it and haven't messed Where, anything up. Where's Nikon at this show? I, oh, I hear Who? crickets. Who's Who? I hear crickets. <laughs> was, was that a camera company you mentioned? <laughs> I think they make film. <laughs> so, can anyone just let you keep it? No, after the they two didn't weeks, let me keep it, you weren't like, I, I, I'm got a check in the mail to yeah. you. Don't worry about it. I'm hanging on to this one. <laughs> no, I, I, I wish I could have. Uh, in fact, I think they hit me up afterwards and said, Hey, you forgot to add another battery. I'm like, Really? <laughs> no. <I'm just> <laughs> <laughs> so, Trevor, real quick, while we're here, Dustin, and I just wanted to know if we could borrow some MagMod stuff for a few weeks. Don't worry, we'll get it back to you. We promise. Hey, um, ask those guys. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. No. no, I have the Mac box, and I, I love it. So, hey, let me ask you guys. So what have you guys enjoyed most about the show? I mean, besides this interview. 
Uh, for me, this is my first uh, big photography conference, big yeah. first uh, trade show I've ever been at. I walked in very overwhelmed. Uh-huh. Um, but no, it's been great. Everyone's been super nice uh, as far as like meeting new people. Um, yeah, it's I, I'm kind of like the person who likes to like touch and feel and see things. So Dustin's kind of like Bruce Willis in Sixth Sense. So he just kind of walked out in the middle of the crowd, <laughs> held his hands out, felt people as they went by. Nice. And then last night we had to go stop some crimes. It's crazy. That is crazy. Yeah. Wow. I yeah. was wondering why those hair on the back of your neck was standing up. Yeah, it's, it's kinda, <laughs> I, I feel dead people. Are you about to do crimes too? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> Did I say Sixth Sense when I meant unbre- Unbreakable? Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, you really went wow. Oh, Bruce Willis references, references are just. <laughs> Merging movies. <laughs> Terrible. See, I thought Jeez. you were going to bring up Die Hard. That's what I thought you were going to bring up. Dustin's like Bruce Willis and Die Hard. Uh, he's been walking around barefoot on glass all day. <laughs> Love Bruce Willis. Well, have you Fine. guys had a chance to go to any of the classes as well? No, we decided, um, because I had a wedding on Saturday, mm-hmm. that we were just going to focus all of our attention on the expo and meeting people, networking with people. Very cool. And uh, learning from... We weren't certain if we could write it off on our taxes if we did uh, <laughs> other educational content instead of making work ourselves i i think you're good (laughs) you know i I will say for anyone who has never come to one of these expo shows um oftentimes they think that they have to buy the 200 300 pass or whatever else this was actually free that's exactly what i was going to say oftentimes you can get the pass for free to go to the expo you don't have to go to all the classes because at a lot of these booths like the magmod booth we have education so right um at wppi if anyone is hearing this before wppi of um which is what february 22nd 23rd something like that yeah um, the Magwad booth, we have literally a speaker every 30 minutes, a new speaker comes up and they, t- I mean, you get so much inspiration, so much education and it doesn't cost you anything. So I definitely encourage people, like you said, go around, touch everything and then get free education from all the different booths. And you- well, thank you, Trevor. I think that's going to do it for us. Absolutely. Thank you. Oh boy. That was a lot of interviews. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Wedding Photo Hangover Podcast. If you love the show, please leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. If you want to connect, we're at Wedding Photo Hangover on Instagram. Dustin is at Dustin underscore McKibben, and I'm at Stephen Dan Alk. We have an awesome Facebook group you should join. Just search for Wedding Hangover on Facebook. If you want more content, though, Head over to the Patreon by going to patreon.com slash WPH. We got bonus, we do weekly bonus episodes of Stephen Dustin Save the World where we answer the weirdest, wildest questions from Facebook in very a very helpful manner, I believe um, you could say. And uh, we also have uh, outtakes from our guest interview episodes. Uh, no outtakes from this episode, though. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time your head is pounding and your limbs feel like dead weight and your entire being aches for the sweet embrace of death. That's right, next week after you shoot, another wedding. This is usually the part where like Dustin and I kind of like uh, talk about like stuff we've been into, like reading, watching, listening to recently. Dustin's not here though, so it's kind of not fun to do this alone. So I'll just say I got really sick with like food poisoning and it was terrible. And um, during that time, I watched Game of Thrones start to finish. It wasn't all I was sick. It was like there, there was some other time in there too. But didn't think I was going to like the series. Never never had any interest in it. I read the first three books. Felt super bored by them. But um, I finally dialed in on the TV show. And it was... A, it was, a, it was a, it was, it was interesting. It was fun. It was, uh, it was like watching a soap opera. It was like watching a Star Wars, just, you know, dirtier. Ringing endorsement, I know. But can I just say, can I just say, season eight, episode three, might be one of the best hours of television I've ever seen. That's the, uh, the long night, for those of you who have watched it. For those of you who haven't, I'm not going to spoil it, but very, very good episode. All right, um, I'm going to let you guys go, and we'll be back in, you know, probably a matter of minutes if if you're just listening to these episodes back to back to back to back we'll be back in a matter of minutes with another new episode with more interviews from imaging Wedding Photo Hangover was edited this week by Steve Van Elk of Bespoke Tone. Go to Bespoke Tone for all of your photo, video, and audio editing needs.